I can see the message we are live on YouTube. Welcome, 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 ladies and gentlemen. Welcome to this episode of Hit Talks Live. Hit Talks Live this episode on the 21st of April. And what is magical about the 21st of April? Well, many things. Did you know it's the Queen of England's birthday today? She is 95 years of age. Also the 21st of April, the reason that we are spreading these messages of hope, inspiration and transformation today is because it's also a very, very magical, energetic day, which is all about bringing your dreams and your desires into manifestation. We'll talk more about that through the episode. And I'm really, really super excited to introduce to you the amazing speakers that we have on this episode of Hit Talks Live. So take it away and have a look who we've got to share with you on this episode. Hey, welcome, welcome, welcome. And so excited to bring, as I say, this amazing episode to you for this Hit Talks Live on the 21st. And when we talk about what Hit Talks is all about, if you're new to Hit Talks, welcome, welcome, welcome. But it's all about the power of eight. Do you notice in my earrings, you know, it's, it's I had them specially made and I wear them to every single episode of Hit Talks because the power of eight is absolutely magical. And what happens with the power of eight? The power of eight is death and transformation together. The power of eight is infinity, it's abundance. You know, there's, there's just so much magic around the power of eight and when hit talks was downloaded about bringing together eight amazing speakers to speak for eight minutes each on eight different perspectives from the heart i was like oh my gosh why what is what does this mean what does this mean but we've been going now for over a year now from the second of the second 2020 which believe it or not equals eight and um, from the second of the second 2020 we've been delivering these amazing episodes of hope, inspiration and transformation. And the speakers speak from the heart about whatever is going on in their life now at the moment, because this is all about short stories of hope, inspiration, transformation, or about what has actually helped them on their journey to transformation. And every single time, it, the energy and the magic just coincides, which just literally makes this so special that I'm so proud to be the host. And I'm also so proud of the lineup of speakers that we actually bring onto every episode of Hit Talks. And this next speaker that I'm gonna, well, the first speaker that I'm gonna bring on has actually been by my side from when Hit, Hit Talks first created, was created. He was there, he was the one we were. I was brainstorming with about how this was going to evolve into the magical, um, I was going to say magical being, perhaps it is a being, perhaps Hit Talks is a being, but into this magical concept of what Hit Talks has been created. Now Rick, you'll see in his bio, he does amazing things throughout the world and not just about being a screenwriter and a comedian and an actor and everything else, he's a dear friend of me, he's a dear friend of Hit Talks and he loves to talk so keeping him down to the eight minutes is something that is a super challenge but I absolutely love it. So Rick, thank you so much my friend all the way from San Diego in between filming as well where he actually said to his crew Hit Talks is really important so I need to do this again so I'm gonna have a little bit of time so thank you so much Rick for being with us you know now may unmute yourself and take your eight minutes my friends well first of all I would love to give Vicky a moment of praise um, she has really championed this idea, and I love the idea because it really gets people to not have a planned speech, but actually speak totally from the heart. And to really speak, you need to be vulnerable. 
I need to be real. And my, I've thought about it. Every time I come on these shows, I, I go, what am I going to talk about? I have no idea what I'm going to talk about. So I'll be totally honest and real. Um, uh, as many people know, I even wrote a book about it. I nearly died a few years ago. I had a, a problem called an encephalocele, which is a leakage of the brain. And basically, you have this spinal fluid, CSF fluid, leaving your brain and leaking through your nose. And you don't know what it is. You just, in fact, when I had it, people would see me constantly sniffling and touching my nose and all this other stuff. And of course, working in Hollywood, the, the rumor was I was on cocaine. Well, the truth is, if I was on cocaine, it'd be a totally different attitude than I have right now. So I, I went and I started researching it. And I said, why am I having this, this problem? And then he, every doctor said, oh, it's allergies and all these other things were wrong. Then I had a horrible fall because I got sick. And I had 105 degree fever and I, I, I um, passed out. And I hit my head and I bled out and I was nearly died. And my family came back from San Diego where they were on vacation to see me in Los Angeles. And they found me in my bed covered in blood. I was rushed to the, the emergency room and I was a number three in the Glasgow coma scale. Now, why Glasgow created coma scales, I have no idea, but I was a number three. Nearly died, spent a week or two in a, a medically induced coma. I finally came out and I said I would, was going to live. And I remember hearing a voice in the coma and it was like, do you wanna come back? And I thought to myself, yes, I have many things to do. And that's when I first came alive. Uh, of course, when you come alive, it's excruciating pain. So the other part of me was going, maybe I spoke too soon. I had no idea. So I got well. And after so many years, I two brain surgeries, I was healed. So yesterday I went to the doctor for a, a checkup. And he actually turned to me and he said, oh, you don't have to come here for your checkups anymore, Rick. You're fine. That's so good. You know, you're perfect. And they checked again. And then he said, oh, no. He saw something. I still don't know what it is. We're not sure what it is, but he scheduled me for an MRI 10 days from now. There was a concern. And I thought to myself, I've gone through two brain surgeries. I can't go through three. It'd be impossible. And why is this happening to me? Why is, is this happening to me? I'm, I feel I'm a good person. I've done so many things. And I said, thought to myself, why not? Why not me? I'm able to handle many things. And I think God only puts, or the universe only puts things in your life that you can handle, that you can learn from, that you can see. And I realized there might be an expiration on me. But the truth is, we're all dying. We're all dying at this moment. That's the one truth we know. So accept it. Accept the idea that you may be dying. It's going to happen eventually. We're all dying together. But why not live together? And it got me to pause and think, I want to live and live my life as fully as possible as I can to be the best that I can be of myself. And the reason I tell this story is for one reason. There's someone that needs to hear this story. Every speaker that's going to speak today, someone needs to hear that story. Someone needs to hear that person. Someone needs to hear the depth of their pain or the depth of their celebration of their life or anything, they need to hear the story that you're about to hear. And I said, I'll make myself vulnerable and tell my story. Yes, this part of me is very frightened. I have no told anyone. This is the first time I've even mentioned this to anyone. But the truth is I was scared. I was scared because I want to live life. I want to enjoy life. I, and I've had a wonderful life. I've been a writer, an actor, a performer, all these things. I've experienced being on Broadway. I've experienced films of mine. Even one of my screenplays recently, uh, Nothing Like the Holidays, is now being up for the Congressional Registry, put it by um, a congressman, put, uh, nominated it. And I thought, what a great honor. And I've had many honors and many lives. I've felt I've lived in such a great way. So I'm happy with my life. And whether this is the end or not the end, it doesn't matter. It's teaching me one thing, that we have to live every day like it is the end. Every day we have to take life and squeeze everything out of it. We can love more, live more, be more, be more of who you are, your unique self. That's the lesson I've learned. The Mayans say in Lakesh, you are my other self. Christians would say, love your neighbor as yourself. But it's about others. And the way you live is you give back to others every single moment you can. And even me speaking at this moment is hoping that someone hears this message and it gives them comfort. 
and it gives them joy and it gives them hope and it gives them transformation. I won't know anything till May 10th and I can't really worry and live that life. I have to realize I can live now and I'll continue to live now to the last breath I have and I'll enjoy life. Even now in San Diego, I'm writing a show. Uh, I'm, I'm creating life. I'm creating roles for actors to perform. And that's good. That's my purpose. Or as my friend Sanjeev Chopra would say, my dharma. Find your purpose in life and live it to its fullest. That's what I would say to anyone listening to this show, listening to this world and seeing how we live. It's our moments we have to look. I remember an old country music song by Garth Brooks. And there was a, a line he said. He said from a song called The Dance. I could have missed the pain, but then I would have missed the dance. This is the life we live, the dance, these moments. We don't know when A may be our last. So if that's true, then live that moment to its fullest. Love to your maximum. Give to you have nothing more to give. Reach out to people and forgive. It all seems when you look at life and you think this may be the end, you realize, how could I have loved more? As an old saying, they, they actually did a survey and they found out that people on their deathbed regretted things like saying, I love you more often and travel and things like that. Don't be that. Travel when you can. Say, I love you when you can. and Forgive when you can. And if anything that I want to leave behind in this world, in this life, is this, love one another. That's my hope for inspiration for all of us today. Think how more you can love. Think who you can forgive. Think the kindness you can give. Because we're all dying together. Why not? Why not live together? And that's my time. Thank you so much. I'm Rick Nahara. Well, Rick, as you know, I love you so much. And thank you so much for sharing that vulnerable, inspirational story. And I'm sure everybody will agree with me that, well, it was very moving. <laughs> I was just going to say, because knowing you so well, it's going to say, I'm just like, I don't want to go. I don't want to go to tears. But, um, you know, it, it, it is. It's inspirational. And, you know, when you're able to share, when you're able to share inspiration from the heart, it's just the touching and the honesty. And I don't know, it's not very often I'm lost for words, Rick. What have you done? <laughs> but what I'm saying, you know, when, 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 we, when, we talk, when we talk about when we talk about things and we just think about, you know, deathbeds you think about moving and you think about moving on and you think about the uh pandem pandemic and everything that we're in at the moment it's reassessing life isn't it you know we, we i speak to many many of the speakers here on a one-to-one -one basis very very often and we all talk about how great it's been for us to be able to reassess our life and to really bring together who really is part of our are, are, are in, in a circle, for instance, who's there to support us, who's there to actually really, um, really love us and for us to love as well. And sometimes it is given us that kind of um, little bit of a hit, let's say, a little bit of a hit, a little bit of a kick to actually think about things like that. And, you know, you've just given us a big reminder. And, you know, there's everything, everything happens for a reason, Nick, uh, Rick, because today being the 21st, as we say, it's not just the Queen of England's birthday. And I know you love the Queen of England. It's not just her birthday, but the energy, as I say, around today is um, in the Mayan, as we, you know, we, 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 we share the love of the Mayan, is um, it's five Achabal, which is all about new life. So we do know that, um, you know, you being in here and you sharing and everyone else being in here, it's all about new lives. It's all about new concepts and everything. So again, thank you so much. Well, here's to new life. Be Goodbye, sure. everybody. Thank yes. you. Yes, here's to new life. Thank you. So, and when we talk about, you know, finding out who your true soul, you know, soul family is and people that are there to support you and people that you really want to be able to support, you know, the, the pandemic for me, I don't know about you, but it's really made me or given me the time and the 
the space to really assess the people in my life. It's really given me the time and the space to really assess what I want to be able to do. As I said in the previous episode of Hit Talks, I was so close to just stopping this platform because of the energy I was giving out and then what I felt, the energy I was receiving for this platform. And it was people like this next speaker and Carly and other people that, that, that come back onto this platform and support us that really, really gave me the love and the strength to continue it. Because I think if I'd stopped doing this, it would have been one of my biggest regrets in life. And this next speaker, as well as just being a soul brother and a dear good friend of mine as well, he's one of the persons, Philip, who, who's really been an advocate of hit talks, as well as just of hit talks about uh, all, also about you know supporting people, about guiding people, about helping people find their purpose, and you know to really get them to understand. Sorry, support them to understand who they are as people and where they need to go. So Philip's bio will come on the screen shortly, and you know he's the founder and the um, principal of the British School of Etiquette. But you know I don't like reading people's bios as much really because when you get to know these people like I do, there is so much more than what's written on that screen. The love, the support, the willingness to actually transform not just himself but everybody around him with his with his teachings, with his lessons, and with his heart. I'm just grateful to have you back Phil on Hit Talks and for you being my very very dear friend so I now give you your eight minutes you just need to unmute yourself good evening to wherever you are in the world or good afternoon or good morning as Vicky loves to use that opening line and I love it very much and to Rick thank you for sharing your journey and story with us. Um, there's more than hope and inspiration, transformation in that message. So many of us go out into this world and we get confused very easily because we allow things to fall in our way and to derail us. And something I just would love to share that, that really came to mind there, that for me, uh, you know, Rick, you shared something about, you know, die together, live together. And I think we as all as human beings really need to understand the importance and power of helping one another. I think we as human beings tend to have lost our way in, in, in so many ways. And it's actually very, very simple. Can you imagine, can you imagine if you helped 10 people, 20 people, one person, you would make a difference in that person's life? You know, and, and, and Rick, I wrote down some things there, you know, that, that, that Rick sort of shared with us. And I really absolutely advocate that life is not a dress rehearsal. Live your dreams, find your purpose, find your why, and follow it. Because I promise you right now, you don't get a second chance, not while you're on this earth. Okay, there's no dress rehearsal. It's almost like smile like you've never cried, fight like you've never lost, love like you've never been hurt, and live like there's no tomorrow. This is what is it, it's all about. And, and Vicky, thank you for such a lovely introduction. You know, you really are an incredible enigma and you go out there to just help so many people. And when you started Hit Talks, there was a lot of intrepidation and people like Rick and people that you surround yourself with have spurred you on and spurred you on. I'll never forget having a conversation with you at the beginning of this year. And I said, Vic, what's going on at Hit Talks? Oh, I'm not sure, I'm not sure. I said, this is something that you have to do. You have to do. And I'm so pleased to see you back up and running again because this is what this is all about. Because this hope, inspiration, transformation is giving every single person an opportunity to take something away from Hit Talks. Just as Rick said, he told a story, he shared it, and it's going to resonate with not, I reckon it's going to resonate with most of the audience. I had a a conversation with an amazing woman in Ireland the other day and she phoned me up and she wanted to come on our train the trainer program as I believe there are quite a few of our wonderful uh, incredible students that have come through the doors of our organization and she said to me you know Philip I've been talking to my business coach my life coach and I shared with her that I wanted to go down the journey of helping people and giving them these real core life skills so that they can take themselves to another level, that they can absolutely go out there and do amazing things. I wanna teach them etiquette. I wanna teach them manners. I wanna introduce the emotional intelligence. And her, and her business coach, her, her life coach, poo-pooed the idea. And I said to her, please do me one favor in life. 
when someone poo-poos your idea, that's their opinion. Everyone's got opinions for everyone else. Vicky, you know what you should do? You should do this. Rick, you know what you should do? You should do this. Lisa, you should try this. Everyone's got great ideas for you, but does it resonate with you? Is it part of you? Is it something that you have a burning desire to do? And if you do have a burning desire to do something, you go for it. Go out there and take it with both hands. Surround yourself with people that are positive. Surround yourself with people that will elevate you. And surround yourself with people that will help you on your journey. And those people are the ones that you want to keep on your journey. Those would be the people that say, hey, not working out here? How about this is an idea? Not working out there? How about this is an idea? Or this is really working. I want to give you some more guidance if I may. And again, when I open up and talk about this sort of thing, we were talking uh, on one of our programs today. We've actually got a current train the trainer going on right now. And so many of us are afraid to take on criticism. Not, I wouldn't call it criticism, feedback or get advice from people. Do yourselves a favor in life. Go out there and find advice from people, but people who care about you, people who understand you, people who make a difference in your life and get their opinion. And it's your choice whether you take that opinion or you don't. But what's wonderful about that is hopefully the people that care and love you from the bottom of their hearts will be honest with you. They'll be open with you. And this is what we call the feedback in life. In whatever we do in your business, get feedback so that you can feed forward. Whatever it might be, your relationships, get feedback so you can feed forward. And this for me, and I finished off this conversation with this amazing woman, and I said, is this something you want to do? She says, Philip, I have a burning desire to do this. She then went on to share with me how she mentored and mentored an amazing Indian woman into a program that very few people have the opportunity to get into. And this Indian woman got into the program. It was in the nursing community in Ireland. And I said, there's your calling. There's your calling. But you've done something amazing. You've given someone some guidance, some confidence, some steering, and you've motivated them and you've let them believe in themselves to move forward in their lives. And every single one of us have, have it in us to help other people. Every single one of us can do something that can make a difference. And here at the organization that, that I'm very proud to represent, I'm possibly one of the most blessed people I know because, hey, I love what I do. Every single day I get out of bed and I go, wow, what has today got in store for me? Not only that, I have got the most incredible alumni that have walked through the door of the organization who are out there now doing some of the most incredible things. And as an organization, I don't even believe we've scratched the surface of what we're able to do. And that's just one organization. Think of yourself as an individual. Think of yourself as building your brand, building your business and making a difference in this world. And many, many years ago, I had the opportunity to work with some dynamic coaches. And they said, you know, get used to the feeling of feeling uncomfortable. Put yourself out there because this is what a life. Challenge yourself each day. Make each day count. And I just really want to finish off with something that really sort of helped me in my life is to really distinguish what is my purpose? How do I share my purpose with people? And my purpose is very much about to be alive and joyful, to be present with energy and passion, to embrace and appreciate those close to me and learn and, and grow and work with people so that I can really inspire and help them to live a far fuller life, to love more abundantly and to make a greater difference now and forever in this world, not just for now, but for generations to come. We all have this in us. We all have the ability to do it. And I send you all a huge virtual hug I thank you from the bottom of my heart for taking time to listen to me. And I really, Vicky, again, thank you for this opportunity. And all of you out there, take life as if we're the bull by the horns and just go for it. Thank you. Yes, let's take life like bull. Like, what did you say? Let's take life like bull's horns. <laughs> <laughs> just grab onto them and let's move forward it's just you know it's 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 inspirational and thank you so much for sharing phil but and it it's it's again i, I don't know whether or not you've actually been reading my mind but when you were saying about taking challenges only today i started a challenge and, and you many of you that know me there's so many things that i do from liver cleanses to you know 
starving myself for weeks upon end with just water and all of these different challenges but today I started a new challenge called 75 hard I don't know if anyone's heard about it where you've got to exercise twice a day for 45 minutes and stick to a diet and read for a book and all this sort of stuff I love challenging myself and and, and sometimes it's all right challenging your body but it's challenging that mind isn't it and it's also challenging about you know as you say getting out there and doing something different and something out of your comfort zone so I'm going to start weight training and I'm like I'm never weight trained before so I'm gonna there's a few challenges I'll let you know on the way about how it goes but thank you so much for sharing and yes it is very true that Philip does wake up in the morning and go Woohoo! what have I got in store for me today because he usually messages messages me and I'm there thinking why are you so happy <laughs> But um, yeah, love having you, love having you here, and love having you part of Hit Talks and a true advocate. Thank you so much. And when we talk about people that come on to Hit Talks, you know, we have people that you know come on time and time again, and because we're doing so many shows, we're having so many people do their own special editions and that as well. And then there's there's people that. I, I connect with and then when you connect with the I want to for me when I connect with some of these people it's just instant as if I've known these people for such a long time and sometimes I actually invite people onto the show that I've never even spoken to however I spend a lot of time in meditation I spend a lot of time actually you know d doing the inner work and I use that as my guide about who comes onto the platform because many people have said to me you'll invite people onto the platform that you've never that you don't know they could say anything you're going live are you stupid you know and all these sort of things and I'm I do not put that energy into my field okay it's just it's just I do not tolerate the lower vibrational energies into my field it's just something that I don't do and at the moment it's working with the magic of hit talks energy but as I'm gabbling on, the lady that I'd like to introduce next is the next speaker is, is Lisa. And she's she's from Boston, which is from where Sanjeev Chopra, who is another Hit Talks original, um, is from as well. And then when we met, we just spent hours and hours on the phone chatting. You know, we're actually working in the crypto space together. There's lots of things that we're doing together. But on top of that, you know, Lisa's bio will come up. But on top of that is that she's been through some hardship. She's been through some transformation. And she's she's always smiling and she's always there to to kind of help and support people in the community that we we work in together and when you listen to what lisa's got to share you know her her radi her she just radiates pure love she just radiates pure happiness so lisa i'm so glad that you're here your first time in hit talks mm -hmm. and so now i give you your eight minutes my love eight minutes and it is well 3 30 where i am so Thank you so much for inviting me. I feel so honored, especially after um, listening and watching some of the other Hit Talk shows and seeing the amazing people that you have um, had on here with you. So, you know, I started to kind of have an idea of, of what I was going to talk about a little bit. Um, I didn't want to write anything down. I wanted to let it flow, but what keeps coming up for me um, is really to share a little bit about what I think transformation is. And we talk about, you know, things in our, in our society these days, like what your superpower is and what transformation has occurred. And really, I, I, I kind of feel like the biggest superpower that any of us, healing is your biggest superpower. What you can heal in your heart, what you can heal and help heal in other people. Um, I know you had said that someone else started talking about something completely different, like their grandmother, um, Vicki, or um, something. And I, I did want to just mention, so two years ago this month, I lost my husband. So um, I was really kind of talk, thinking about talking about this after I heard Rick speak and you know so your your superpower really is your greatest ability to heal um it isn't about you know being the superman or wonder woman in the capes it's about living your life um kind of coming back down to the core of who you are and and rebooting and so i am um, actually I, I do a lot of work as a hypnotherapist and a results coach. And um, it's when I actually feel most useful. We talk about living our purpose. And 
I don't know what the big grand purpose is, the big scheme, but I, I do know that when I'm helping someone else, that's when I'm out of my own head. And that's when it actually allows me to heal because the focus is, is shifted um, off of me. Um, but there are some core things about, about healing that I wanted to talk about because in the same way we talk about being having you know some kind of superpower whether it's or a transformation whether it's a physical transformation or an emotional transformation or a spiritual transformation or a financial transformation those are all different types of healing that we have in ourselves so we can have a physical healing when you've been through a trauma or difficulty or even now you know we're coming out hopefully of this pandemic um, and so healing physically, healing in the body and taking great care of the body is, is really, really important because unless Elon Musk has um, you know, something else up his sleeve, uh, we only get one body per lifetime. So it's really important to take good physical care of your body. And I know everyone on here knows, knows that, you know, what to eat, what not to eat. Um, and I think at the core of it, in the physical space of healing is really getting the right sleep. That sounds very simple. Um, but when you have adequate sleep, you make better decisions and you feel better and you can process your own healing better. So taking a nap when you need to, um, or whenever you, when you feel like it is a really good thing. I always, um, I share that kind of as a joke that one of my favorite things is lying on my couch, staring off into space and dozing off for a few minutes. And then you feel so refreshed. So that's something that has really helped me um, is getting the right um, sleep and sleep when I need it. And then there's, of course, the emotional and mental, the emotional healing um, that we all need to go through uh, when we go through something really difficult or even being in this pandemic. And while I'm one of those people who can certainly be a hermit now and then, um, I don't mind being home by myself for extended periods of time. But um, yes, someone just wrote power nap during lunch break. Absolutely. Um, so, but healing emotionally is also about connection and about connecting with other people and getting help from wherever you need to get it from, whether it's a, a therapist, whether it is a friend, whether um, it is, you know, someone that you need to connect with in your life, if you're revisiting events over and over from a long time ago. Um, and then there's the spiritual healing, and that's really looking at, it's looking at what you believe and why you believe it. Um, and from my perspective, it's also about being connected to what is beyond this life and what and who um, still go on. Um, Einstein, you know, says that energy or matter can only be transformed, can't be destroyed. So where does that energy go? Um, and it's really tuning into that. And there's also this big piece of it. And that is financial healing. And when you've been through something and you wanna to get to another place, you really do have to take the time to take stock of where you are so that you can then see where you wanna go and plot your course and see how you wanna get there. So those are some things that I, I've just, that have really helped me. The biggest is, is connection and sleep. Um, and I also wanted to say that, um, I do a lot of hypnotherapy and listen to a lot of, of hypnotherapy myself and audios because it brings you new thoughts. It brings you new ideas. It shifts your thinking into, um, the direction that you want to go in. So I think in closing, because I have about another minute is, really to think about whether you're, you're, you've been through a really difficult time or whether you simply need and want a fresh start in your life. It's 
what you need to do to be that phoenix rising. They may not be these huge steps. They may be just a series of a few small steps. And to remember that every effort you make now and every effort you've ever made all counts and all stacks up on each other to create the next moment and the next version of yourself. So with that, I believe that is my eight minutes. And so I say thank you again to Vicki for having me here. It's been, um, it's a real pleasure to, to be in the presence of all these amazing people. So thank you. You are welcome, my love. And I just want to say how proud I am of you because <clears throat> when we were speaking it was you know about having to share stories like that and it's still really raw and i'd like to share with um share with the the, the people watching the live also watching the replay and the people in the room about how strong lisa is and it hasn't always been this easy but you know she's got an amazing 17 year old daughter she's literally just you know she's an inspiration for me you know when I, we were we were talking and what she's doing you know we were talking my daughter's 17 as well and it just reminds me i've got a big massive picture on my wall and it says the person on top of the mountain didn't fall there and this is the thing what lisa is saying is that being able to help other people that's really what helped her transform you know this is what we do in our um in our in our crypto group as well which is all very private it's helping people transform financially helping people transform consciously and energetically as well and you know she's really making a difference in the world so lisa thank you so much for being here and as you know now hit talks is your family this is what i love about the people that come back continually as is because this is a family and you will feel it and you will be able to reach out to all the other speakers and and become friends really deep friends i know through hit talks that some really really deep connection connections and relationships have been created because that is the whole download the concept of this platform is about it being the power of eight the power of together the power of fin infinity and the power of relationships so you are you are part of hit talks family so welcome 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 which takes me on to the next speaker which is he was also invited into the Hit Talks family as well as a, as a, as a newbie to us, which I absolutely love. Now, Annette is, um, is a really, really good friend of Pearl Cox, who's also here in the Zoom room and a huge advocate of Hit Talks. Now, Pearl hosted her own special edition of Hit Talks last week, and her speaker was Annette. And Annette was there really excited to speak, but her sound wouldn't work and it worked in the, in the test run. And so we kept trying to get her on to speak and we had to close the episode without hearing from Annette. And I thought that that's not what Hit Talks is about. She was so excited and fired up to be part of this. And Pearl was trying her best to get her onto the show. And so we could not have another Hit Talks without having you on the show, um, Annette. So welcome, 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 my friends. Welcome to Hit Talks family. And I now give you your eight minutes for you to share your messages of hope, inspiration and transformation. Vicky, thank you so, so much. I'm still excited to be here. And actually, all the speakers before me, I felt quite tearful. Everything's quite emotional. Everybody's stories and sharing. So I'm going to carry on with my story and hope that hopefully it will resonate with somebody here or in the audience who's watching tonight or later. So my journey of transformation began about 20 years ago in a really strange way, something I wasn't expecting, but I was made redundant after 20 years in the same job. I hated the job, I have to say. So but I was made redundant and that really was a massive shock for me. It was a kick up the, the backside that I really needed, but it came so unexpectedly. I plunged into a really dark place, um, into depression. And that depression, it kind of lasted a long time. And in the end, I thought I'd better go and try and get some help, as the speakers have said before. So I went to my GP um, and he told me to look upwards and outwards. And I had absolutely no idea what looking upwards and outwards meant. I just knew I was in this dark place. I was frightened. I didn't know where to go. I didn't know how I was going to get out of it. But for me, it became a journey from the head to the heart. 
and by did I live in my head I lived in my head 24 hours a day everything I did was I was stuck in my head and looking back on that now I've no idea how how I managed to live like that but I went to the doctors as I say and just got nowhere and this this idea of um, hope at that time I was I was in despair I didn't know where to go I had feelings of suicide and I was about two minutes to running myself off the road I was going down the back road near a, in a country lane and I could have just turned the wheel and turned right but something within me fought back and I pulled the car off the road and I just kept driving and I know I was shaking at the time and I remember thinking I've got to get some help I've got to get some help then this weird synchronicity came into my life it was a newspaper article on depression and I I read it and I followed it up and I, I spoke to the person who had written it and he said, well, this is something you've never done before. And I thought, here we go, it's going to be medita medication and lots of tissues and things. It was nothing like that. This man taught me about meditation. He taught me how to live in the moment. He taught me how to accept, as Rick was saying. He taught me how to forgive. And it was a very, very difficult and dark place to be because I felt so alone and isolated but when I began this practice as I will call it it was about a month into it and I started to feel differently these feelings of, of despair and suicide and hopelessness were starting to go and I remember going on holiday sort of a few weeks after that and we went into some beautiful gardens in Scotland and I saw for the first time colours. So if anybody's ever been depressed or in that dark place, everything, if you bog down, you can't see anything. And these colours, and I remember feeling so emotional about being able to see these trees, these rhododendrons, and I rang my teacher up at the time and I said, oh my God, I feel so, I feel spiritual. And he said, yes. That's exactly what happens, but you, you have to put the effort into that. You have to put the work in and only you could do it. And I was never going to tell you what to expect. It was down to you to take responsibility of your own life, put that effort in and begin. And then that journey, from that day on, that journey became a head to heart journey for me. So moving out of my head into my heart was a very, inspiring it was powerful it was scary it was all those things about coming out of my comfort zone and one of the things talking about dreams and aspirations one of my dreams was to be able to sit in front of an audience like this and share how that journey transformed my life and it allowed me to inspire other people and it allowed me to follow my own path which is a very powerful place to be. So when I when I look back at that now, and I can see how, how my path's been laid out and I've had the courage to follow it really, it's given me hope, it's given me transformation, it's given me inspiration, and it's given me all those things I never dreamt of. It's given me courage and tenacity and all those things, as I say, that. I never, I never thought that had because at that time I felt so hopeless, unwanted and useless that I just couldn't see another way out. There is another way out and there are ways you can help yourself and there are so many things out there to help you. So what I would say is that looking back now, would I have changed it? No, I wouldn't because what's happened to me has allowed me to sit here share with others and be able to inspire somebody else and i'm totally grateful for that and for this opportunity tonight vicky thank you so much you are welcome and do you know it literally just touches my heartstrings that hit talks can be part of bringing your dreams into being and did you know that the whole energy of these days are around the mayan calendar as i speak about and one of the concepts of today 
is, um, it's written down there, the concept today is all about bringing your dreams into being, which is absolutely perfect because that's just what you've said and this is what we are able to, to, to be part of your journey, to bring your dreams into the physical. And I know that, you know, from listening to you and feeling your energy, that this is not just going to be one of your first speaking gigs or platforms. It's going to go bigger and brighter, you know, because the more that we put the energy behind what our passions are, you are surrounding yourself with the right people which is what philip said and then from there we just then as it says on the mountain we do not get to the top by just falling there we do it together with others so thank you so much for sharing your an inspiration and being part of the hit talks family so welcome 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 so god you know it's amazing that it's just that the magic of how everything just kind of coincides without any planning because as we say hit talks is all about speaking from the heart nothing's planned we don't know what anyone else is speaking about it just kind of happens that is why it's magic <laughs> which brings me on to the next magical speaker and this amazing gentleman from the united kingdom um carly was on a special edition of philip's uh, hit talks on the british with the british school of etiquette carly is also going to be hosting his own special edition which is going to be super exciting as well and he really again he's, he's really supportive of the youngsters about bringing their dreams into being as well and really helping men and women to transform their lives into delivering their messages to actually live their dreams so his bio will come up soon but Carly is also an inspiration to me because he was one of the other persons, persons, that's really good English, Vicky, isn't it? One of the other people that actually reached out to me personally after the last episode when I was actually perhaps thinking of not continuing with hit talks he was like vicky you will be given the world and in service and justice if you stop it please don't and this is what i mean like when philip says as well when you surround yourself with the right people then you know you're in the right place so thank you for being part of hit talks family um carly i now give you your eight minutes what is up everyone what is up everyone vicky thank you so much thank you to everyone thank you for your stories thank you for your bravery i really appreciate the opportunity to be here but to get this show going i need to share with you three numbers 6 28 and 40. it was when i was six years old my primary school teacher caught me daydreaming in a moment of total caribbean bliss the sun was shining, the wind was blowing through the classroom. I totally zoned out. And for the first time in my life, I experienced total and utter presence, just the wonder of my imagination. And I felt like I was in absolute heaven. I was yanked back to reality when my teacher shouted, Carlisle, pay attention. And then little would I know this would make its way to my school report where it said next to, he daydreamed, he's a talented young man, but he daydreams too much, right? 28, I said to my manager, look, I know we've got a great thing going here. I know we're getting great results. I know it's a fantastic team. You need to understand you guys have done nothing wrong. There is just something in my heart that I need to go off and do because there is more to give and there are people that need the gift that's inside of me. My manager looked me dead in my eyes and he said, Carlisle, who the hell do you think you are to go off and want to follow your dreams? I said, what? He said, people like us do not, I repeat, do not go off and do things like what you wanna do. You get a job, you work that job till you die and you hope you have enough for your pension. I said, you know what? Peace to you, sir, love and happiness. If that's what you want to do and for all the millions of other people that are out there, that's absolutely okay. But that is not the path that I'm supposed to travel. I've got work to do. Now, before, the, before I tell you the next phase of the story, I went to an event in Birmingham and I was so fortunate to meet 
the right honorable Philip Sykes. And in a moment, Philip did an exercise with me that was so powerful. It was a spur of the moment thing in just a two second interaction. Philip raised my hand and he said to me, you are a rock, you're immovable, you cannot be shifted. And my hand was like an iron in concrete. I said, these exercises in the gym are paying off, boy. Next thing he said to me now, hold your hand there. And he said, you are weak, you are weak, you are weak. And just like paper, I said, what kind of magic is this man doing? My hand just started coming down. And he said, Carlisle, you are whatever you choose to believe. Now the final phase of the story, at 40, I tell a lie, it was, yes, it was 40. I'm sitting in a tribunal at work. I've been off work for six months. I've been totally depressed. Never in my life have I ever been off work. Never have I been in a situation where I don't know how to solve it. I've shut down. I'm not communicating with friends. I'm lying in the same spot morning to night. One of my friends came to see me and he saw a bottle of water beside me. And out of real concern, because he doesn't drink, might I add, he said, how much vodka have you been drinking? I said, what? I said, no, it's water. He said, Carlisle, you need to move. And in that instance, I remembered something Philip said, and I also remembered changing the question, just like Rick said, why me, why me? I said, why the hell not me? And I'm gonna finish with this. It reminds me of this story I heard where this lady goes on this conservation trip and she sees these turtles going into the sea. And one turtle in particular is struggling, looking like it's not gonna make it. She goes to, to, to try and help the turtle. The conservationist on the beach says, no, don't touch it. She said, but, 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 he said, that turtle is exactly where it needs to be. And everything that it's going through right now is exactly what it's going to need to get to where it's going. Ladies and gentlemen, I implore you, like the six-year-old me, dig deep and hold on to those dreams. Dream so big that you get sleepless nights. When you take action, be bold and fearless in your action. And whatever actions you think you need to take to get to where you're going, multiply it by a factor of 10. Because guess what? The worst thing that can happen is you overshoot the goal that you're aiming for. And the last thing that I want to say is surround yourself with the right people. Don't go to your butcher about your plumbing. Don't go to your plumber about your electrics. And for God's sake, don't go to Mood Hoovers for advice on your dreams. Each and every one of us has something that only us can do. One of one is what you are. So whoever's out there that needs to hear this, that dream, that job, that position, that amount of money you want to save, that business you want to start, don't wait. Start today. Accept and understand where you are is exactly where you need to be. And everything you need to get to the next level is being taught to you at this one. But remember, once you get to that next place, take time to celebrate those wins. Pat yourself on the back and say, yes, I've arrived. I'm happy. I've done it. And if there's more in the tank, keep pushing. My name is Carl Ailati. I love you. Thank you so much. When you said those three numbers, I was going to say, why aren't you saying eight in there? And then I got the, I got the message. But everybody watching this, thank you so much. But everyone watching this, how many times can you count that somebody has said to you to stop daydreaming? And I'm sure every single one of us during our lives have actually been told that through the through parents or through, as you say, through teachers or in some sort of context. 
And the more that we dream, as you say, the more that we dream, the more that we're able to manifest. Manifestations comes from dreaming. It comes from visioning. It comes from actually feeling the emotions. You know, when I really wanted to manifest, a certain vehicle that I drive and I really wanted I, I literally used to dream of me sitting in there and dreaming of the colors and dreaming of different things and when you actually literally say spend that time of daydreaming and really feeling the energies and the emotions and the tears and the love then that is how manifestation happens so everybody out there dream you know you are in the right place at the right time. And again, it's just synchronicity. Only last night I was watching a documentary on Australia and they, was, they were talking about the little sea turtles you were talking about. And they were saying that out of a thousand baby sea turtles, only one survives. And I was like, oh my gosh, that's really, really sad. Um, but there's like 14,000 that they, they said that go into the sea every single night and one out of a thousand survives, so that's 14. I was like, oh my gosh. But if you think about it, at the right place at the right time, Time, those are the 14 you could be one of the 14 <laughs> so add that number on there as well so thank you so much for sharing so everybody dream and as we've said throughout this whole episode it's just synchronicity that the energy of today is all about bringing dreams into being so after this episode everybody here on the live everyone here in the replay everybody here in the zoom room go into meditation go into dreaming write your dreams write your goals write your inspirations and the energy of hit talks will help you manifest it yes so that takes me on to our next speaker of manifestation. Now, again, Tahira has been part of Hit Talks many times. Tahira has also had her own special edition of Hit Talks with the Golden Door Awards, which Hit Talks actually sponsor her concept of where she's bringing truth advocates and writers from all over the world to actually share their truth. And your, um, Jane will bring Tahira's bio, bio up now. And it's all about how she literally is putting all of her energy into what she's doing in the Golden Door Awards. And if we're talking about dreaming, this lady is able to dream and manifest because she is surrounding herself with amazing people. She's literally transformed, like me, from corporate into this new world. And she is absolutely rocking it. So it is three o'clock in the morning over in Malaysia. And, you know, this is commitment. This is really, really about wanting to share hope, inspiration, and transformation of actually being part of our family at three o'clock in the morning. So Tahira, thank you again, my love, for being with us. And as your partner and sponsor of Golden Doors Awards, I now give you your eight minutes. Thank you so much, Vicky. Um, it's such a blessing to listen to all these messages and uh, they have all moved me. And it's interesting, my message is going to be sort of a combination of that, I feel. Um, I'm going to start with this, about the most beautiful and most joyful moment of my life. It is not a holiday. Mind you, it's 4 a.m. now, <laughs> so uh, I'm doing my best. It was not a holiday. Uh, it wasn't something that was fun. It was when I was on the bedside of my dying father. And I was guided, talking about dreams and visions, I had a vision to go to his bedside because I had received a vision, angelic, telling me that he was dying and I had to be there in his last journey. Of course, that time was painful, but when I went there and he said to me, Tahira, don't tell anyone, I'm dying. You're the first one to know. And I said to him this, tell me what I need to do for you. I'm just here to serve you. When I did that, I felt ultimate joy. And the, first, the next two weeks of just serving him, this means, asking him what he wanted, to release whatever unforgiveness with people, calling them, okay? And uh, all the things which he never shared before. And he just 
I was just being a deep listener and just listening and listening and listening. And uh, now my father, my late father, was one of those people, the few people involved, who inspired me to set up Golden Door. Golden Door, truth and integrity of the written word. My father, late father was very much uh, a truth advocate. My mentor, my late mentor, I lost him also. My godfather was a freedom fighter. He passed on in this November, 2020. So I lost four people who I re was really close to the past two years and two best friends. But I realized that regarding my father, that was a very joyful moment for me because I was serving him. And I saw him as an extension of myself. And he said to me, well, no matter what hits you, keep doing it. What you're doing is too clean for this world. <laughs> Truth and integrity is too clean for this world, but do it anyway. I said to him, it's so difficult, so many challenges. And I remember that, do it anyway. And uh, that has been my, my uh, motivation actually, to see others an extension of myself and to go all out and do it anyway, if it's for something that's for humanity. The pandemic hit, my, father, my late father passed on, on in January, 2020. The pandemic hit just end of Jan, 2020. I had to change the entire Golden Door to a virtual event. Uh, we lost a lot of money. Uh, I thought, oh God, what's gonna happen? But do it anyway, keep going and going. Um, how do you run a major event like that? Um, things happen, Think you get, work it out. And it was amazing together with Hit Talks, we had an amazing event in September. And I took the advice, which I learned about see others an extension of yourself. So I really put myself out there and trusted those I never worked with before. Um, and uh, gave everything I had, everything I had. And I saw that was what led to its success, at least the first milestone, regardless of what the economy is, regardless of what setbacks, that was what made it successful. And that's why I say that was the most joyful moment in my life was when my, was my bedside, my father, because I was giving everything of myself and I was just listening and learning. Then of course I faced more setbacks. Uh, Vicky knows this and more and more, even after the event, keep going, do it anyway. So I can empathize that uh, when you're starting something new and you're doing something for humanity, because I spent all my life doing things for corporate technology, I was, a, I was actually an advisor to government for e-government. That's all I did for 25 years. <laughs> and now I was focusing on the human, it's a huge risk and that's it. And truth, people will say to me, what is this? You can't even measure truth. You're looking at the written word. How do you measure it? How could you be judge that? Do it anyway. It's too esoteric. People were not gonna go for this. Why would they want to even sponsor you? I've had people say that in my face, we don't want to sponsor you. You can't even measure it. And you can't change things so easily. Do it anyway. You know what's, what's important. <clears throat> it doesn't have to be a success immediately. There will be pains, but I know there's a light. I, guess I could always see the light. And that's what it is to go into meditation, see in the spiritual realm. Uh, to be guided by the spirit always. And to make that the guide always, no matter what. Uh, as I said, I lost for the closest people in my life. But what, one thing I felt is that they left something in me. It's like their great attributes, I suddenly had it. 
my late father's great attributes, my godfather's late attributes, best attributes, his, my two best friends who died too young, I received something from them. So they were mentoring me, I started mentoring others. Yes, I became a mentor of another level, just as they left. So now my message actually is just very simple. Do it anyway, as my father said, because you know what's important. You need to know what's important. Please don't look at the world. You, look at, you need to look above the world. You need to put yourself in the balcony and look at this world, what is required right now and what is your gift. And see others an extension of yourself because there's a limit to what you can do for your, on your own. When you're looking at big things, you want to think big, right? Carly, you talk about that. You go for big things. You can't do it on your own. You have to look at others in an extension of yourself. And then you can really make it happen. Thank you so much. And that is my message. Thank you. Face the fear and do it anyway. Who has read that book? I think it's somebody called um, somebody Jeffries, Sharon Jeffries, Susan, Je but face the fear and do it anyway. I remember reading that when I was actually going through my chartered surveyors uh, exams and I was shitting myself because it was just like so intense. And I remember somebody giving me that book and I've passed on to many people and just do it exactly what you what you say. And I think Tahira, you should have something tattooed across your forehead, but I, obviously you're beautiful. So that's really not going to look too good. But I think you should have commitment on your forehead as well, because that is one lady that is truly committed into what she's doing. And again you know the, the concept and the synchronicity of everything is that it's all about living your dreams stepping into your dreams commit to it just do it anyway face the fears surround yourself with the right people and get the people to lift you up the mountain instead of trying to do it by yourself and taking the lessons of the people that have left you in your life whether or not that's through passing or whether or not that's just through dis dissolving because you know there's some people in our life for a reason for a season for a lifetime and then they evolve to another being and it's really getting into that space of what they can leave you because you know as you were speaking then to hear i was actually thinking about the people that i've had in my life that have perhaps not been the best people um, and best supportive and philip will know exactly the gentleman i'm talking about but however he was in my life for a reason and he did what he did for a reason and i've learned so much of that and i've met so many people and you know maybe a part of him still is inside of me but i hope it's the good part and not the bad part but anyway so thank you so much for sharing that with us and when we talk about synchronicity, we're now going to go on to this lovely lady, Bahita, and I hope I pronounced your name right, because I do apologise to everybody with my pronunciation. I'm British, and I just kind of just speak the way that it looks on the page. <laughs> um, but this lovely lady was, again, gifted to me at the last minute, because we had somebody fall out due to sickness, and it was literally a couple of hours ago that um, this lady stepped in because she was going to be speaking at another event with Pearl, as I say, who's, who's hosted her own special edition hit talks as well. And, you know, when you feel the energy and I've, she's, we're doing a couple of events together in the future with Pearl and that as well. And just being part of this family and saying to you that welcome into the hit talks community and you know we feel your energy we know that you're actually here to spread messages of transformation with the world and i really can't wait to actually hear your eight minutes so welcome to the hit talks family thank you and i do believe in like you know there is a reason here like you know last being here in last minute <laughs> so that that's the sign <laughs> so yes my name is Beata and thank you so much and it's it's a pleasure and honor to be with all of you here and uh you know I really oh gosh all your stories it's just like inspiring and what I really would like to start with it's kind of like summary what I heard today and the only constant in life it's change so everything, what everyone spoke about it, it's like a big change in our life. And very often we are asking ourselves, like, why, why is this happening to me? 
instead why this is happening for me. You know, things happening for us to learn and to grow. And I really, I know I've got the eight minutes and I have to count the time. <laughs> so big, big, like short, you know, story about the changes in my life. And as a young woman, uh, I used to work as a nurse and I never, never saw any like machines hoist to lift people. My whole body became a hoist every day uh, until, of course, my uh, I took a place in hospital bed. I end up in hospital because I had problem with my back. And you can imagine for young women with two small children, you know, that was just like we grow our family. I just felt my life it's over. And I always, my big dream, it was always like to care for others. And I felt so I, I, I felt like really in nursing, I find my purpose. And I, I, you know, when I saw people leaving hospital wards, I just felt like I could fly. That was the pleasure, like being part of people's life and really to support them to recover. Uh, the day when I was taught like, you know, okay, but, you know, be grateful for your health, but you can't really, you have to be careful and you can't lift anymore. I just felt like, so there is no rule for me anymore because as a nurse, if I can't lift, that means I can't do anything because personal care and really caring for others, you know, lifting was the part of it. And even I couldn't imagine myself in different role. I was like, how I can work or you know, what I can do in my life if I can work with people. So it, it was like big, big change for me. Uh, but things, happening for us. <laughs> so I was moved to work um, with people. It was like addiction world. So I just felt like, mm. so I know the body and I'm, not, I'm going to meet the soul. And that was the way, seriously. Uh, at the beginning, I just felt like, like my role as a nurse was quite limited, but I just discovered like, gosh, you know what, nursing or like helping people, it's not only caring for them, like in physical ways. We've got different ways, like how we can serve the world. And I was so ready, I just felt so inspired. And it was the corner really to meet people and really the, all, the, the stories, what led them to addiction, what's happened in the life. Because as I mentioned, what it's constant in our life, it's the change. So something happened in their life. Why they choose alcohol, gambling, drugs to manage the changes in their lives. So that was the time when I discovered like, hmm, you know, I know I have to, like people say, you know, we have to close one door <laughs> to make sure we can open the other, uh, the other ones. So that was the way how I move on. And yes, then that was the time when I really, uh, I was thinking about like how I can support people more. So then the social work become part of my life. I just felt like I can do more to, to really to see people's lives from like social care perspective, really to see people's life from holistic approach, not only from medical one. And being, and I just felt like I need to learn more and more and more. I just felt like hungry, <laughs> like I need to find new approaches really to support people as best as, as I can, because I know we all have power inside us. So it is really like all of us, we've got values, knowledge, skills, like we can really share across the world, across the globe. And of course, uh, it became a time when I decided to leave my country and to move to England. Big change in my life. I wasn't that young and I had still my family, two children. And it was like start to, from beginning. And of course, I was asking myself, it's the right time. It's the right decision. And I'm not going to lie. I felt a stranger as well because it was new country, new culture, new language, new people. But I always felt, or I had my mission, I think, and my vision in my heart. I, 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 it, 
I just felt like I'm here to serve the world. It doesn't matter in which country I'm going to do it. So I came here with my plan because I had my qualification, my skills, my experience. I just felt like I'm going to do the same. So to be honest with you, I overcome my dreams, <laughs> which uh, I, I was like, gosh, I can't believe it. And the, uh, I strongly believe in the power of personal brand. So this is why my recent involvement or my recent project, it's really focusing on our personal brand, because it doesn't matter if you are running your own business of your work if you're working for a company or you are mother your father you are a friend you've got your own brand you represent your brand why people coming to you to to be you know to join the, the show vicky why people will go to philip or why people will connect with per it's because of your personal brand you've got something in it and you know, the ability really to, thanks to technology and we've got the ability now to become more visible and to connect with people. So that's the best way uh, how we can really um, share our messages, share our stories and to inspire people. So I'm so grateful for being the part of the family, if I can say it right now, because I'm, I'm feeling so close to Pearl and I'm always, you know, following her and her um, events because that's you know the power of internet now or like the online life it's very strong and I would say like you know the the world has no borders we can meet look we've got we've got Tara from like she's here with us and it's three o'clock in the morning we've got other people from different countries so it's just beautiful. So um, it's, it's a honor to be here with all of you. And don't forget, you've got a power in you and you are the best brand on the world because that's you. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. And yes, everything happens for a reason. And every single one of us, you know, we have our own internal power. And anyone watching the live, watching the replay and people here in the Zoom room, if you think back, how many times have you actually compared yourself to others? Perhaps compared yourself to people on Snapchat. Snapchat, that's my, that's, that's very, very kind of young, isn't it? That's my, I only speak to Snap, uh, Snapchat for my daughter. But how many times have you compared yourself to perhaps to people on Instagram or Facebook or LinkedIn or Twitter or something like that and you know and it's just like oh my gosh I wish I could be them and whatever context that's in or whether or not there's some sort of compar comparisonitis is the word that I use um, to my clients saying get rid of any comparisonitis, uh, comparisonitis because you are unique and that's exactly what you're, what, what you're sharing as well and yes welcome to Hit Talks family because as we say anyone that's been part of Hit Talks whether or not you're part of speaker or people within the room as I say you know we open our arms to you and again, anybody watching the recording, anyone watching the live, anyone in the Zoom room, if you would like to be a speaker at Hit Talks at any time, please do reach out. Or if you want to host your own special edition, like many of the people here have already. But it is now this time that we're like, oh my gosh, we're our last speaker already. And it's just like, where has the time flown by? I'd like to introduce you to Adam. And Adam and I met, oh God, it must have been a couple of years ago at a women's and business event down in London. And, you know, when your paths kind of cross and then they disappear and they cross again and then they disappear. And as I was kind of going, you know, I go through meditation and decide about the people that, you know, I really want to be part of Hit Talks or it's just generally by messages. And then Adam came into the scene and I thought, somebody mentioned to me, it was Shaquille a while back, said to me, you should get Adam on the show. And I was, you know, we had so many people lined up to actually be speakers at that time. So this opportunity came. So Adam, welcome, welcome, welcome to being part of the Hit Talks family. I know that you've got a big mission in the, in the world of really supporting a million people. And at the time, you know, as we bring these speakers together, we didn't know there was going to be two people that work very heavily in hypnosis. So everything happens for a reason. Everyone was the right place at the right time. Adam, and welcome to Hit Talks again, and I now give you your eight minutes, my friends. Thank you so much, Vicky. I really appreciate this. And I love the synchronicity that we're all talking about personal transformations and missions and all this kind of stuff and finding your purpose because 
didn't have any plans of what to talk about, but that's exactly what I am talking about. So uh, it's, a, it's a, an amazing privilege. Thank you, Vicky, for the invite. So my name is Adam Cox. I am a clinical hypnotherapist. And prior to COVID, I was working from Harley Street, a very prestigious street in, in London. And um, many people were asking me um, why I became a hypnotist. So I'm not going to talk about what hypnosis is or how hypnosis works, but I'm going to talk about why I became a hypnotist. Because at the point when I became a hypnotist, I was 36 years old, I had already achieved a certain level of success. I had built a PR company uh, to a top 150 agency in the, in the UK. Uh, I'd built a property portfolio and was doing all right. So why was it that I suddenly, at the age of 36, became a hypnotist? And when I was thinking about, and whenever I think about that question, I naturally regress, as I think many people do. We kind of get nostalgic and we kind of think about who we were at a different point in time. And I always go back to when I was 18, 19 years old. I'd left home for the first time at, you know, to go to university. And that is meant to be the time of your life. That is meant to be you know, fun and nonstop partying. And for me, it wasn't. For me at the age of 18, I had such severe anxiety that I couldn't even leave the room that I was in. I was a recluse, you know, and it was, it's weird to kind of say that now because, you know, I'm, I'm relatively confident, but at the age of 18, 19, the idea of leaving my apartment, I don't know if anyone remembers those heart rate monitors with the, with the straps, the polar ones, but I remember having that and my heart rate was getting to about 200 beats per minute at the idea of leaving the apartment to go and get groceries in the Sainsbury's like half a mile down the road. It was mad. And for me, now I work with a lot of phobics, but my phobia back then was people. Now, if you've got a fear of clowns, you can avoid clowns. If you've got a fear of people, you can't really avoid people. There's 7 billion, a billion of them in the world. And it was a, a weird situation because I couldn't do anything. And I had all these dreams about what I wanted to do for the future, but I couldn't do any of it because I had this constant fear of the evaluation of other people, constant crippling anxiety. And I could have seen a doctor and got antidepressants. I could have got, you know, the beta blockers for anxiety. But a thought popped into my head. What if I'm creating this anxiety? What if it is something that I'm doing to myself? What if it's my thoughts, my beliefs, the way I'm thinking that is actually creating this? And that was a bitter pill to swallow because why would I voluntarily put myself in such a miserable, crippling situation? But there was a flip side of that coin. And that flip side was if I've created this, perhaps... I could create a different reality for me. And I kind of consider two different futures, a future of, well, if I keep this living in my own prison, what does that future look like? And it wasn't a very happy future. Or what if I change how I was thinking, how I was feeling, maybe there's a different future available for me. And it occurred to me that I wasn't doing this deliberately. I wasn't consciously making my heart beat at 200 beats per minute and making me scared and terrified to do anything. Um, for me, this was all happening unconsciously. And that's why I explored, how do you make changes at the unconscious level? And I think a lot of people get confused between the conscious and the unconscious, and they think that the unconscious is somehow mystical at some level. I like to keep it really simple. The unconscious is anything that you're not conscious about in the moment. Unconscious is the opposite of mindfulness. It's anything you're not aware of. So, you know, I appreciate that certain things are clearly unconscious, like your memories and your beliefs and your values. But there are many things that people don't think are unconscious that are unconscious, things like thoughts and even behaviors. And when I say behaviors are unconscious, a lot of people look at me like I'm weird. But then I asked them, I said, when was the last time you consciously took a breath or consciously blinked? And then they realized, actually, a lot of human behavior is completely on autopilot and it's just happening by itself. So for me, I started to dig deep as to what was happening in my unconscious. What did I believe? about people? What did I believe about myself and what I was capable of? Uh, what did I value most? And what I really valued most was the approval of other people because I didn't think I was worth anything. You know, So that was kind of a belief system of not being good enough. And once you start figuring out how to change those beliefs and how to change those values and how to change those thought patterns and behavior, the world becomes a very exciting place. So not only did I not become crippled by anxiety, but I was able to um, create a PR company at the age of 23, um, started taking lots of different risks in, in business that were very measured and educated, became a self-made millionaire at the age of 27, 
and continued to do lots of crazy things that I shouldn't really do. You know, for example, when I became uh, specializing in phobias, I decided that, well, if I have any right to help other people, I need to fix my own irrational fears and even started taking up stand up comedy. Now, for someone that had a fear of people, that is the most terrifying thing that you could possibly do. But I felt that congruency is an important value for me. I've got no right to help other people with their fears if I can't face my own fears. And what I learned in terms of the why for hypnosis is that it was a key to unlock my own prison cell. And my own prison cell was my own making, but hypnosis for me was the key. So at the age of 36, I started having this kind of intuitive thought, this kind of, you know, when you get these recurring thoughts, I wasn't having these recurring thoughts about PR or property or business or investing. Hypnosis, psychology kept coming to me. And I thought, right, this is for a reason. I'm going to cr trust my intuition here that there's some kind of purpose behind this. And I know a lot of people have talked about purpose today. For me, the moment I started taking action that aligned with that purpose, everything got easier and I felt so much more fulfillment because I think anyone in the, in the industry of helping other people's change realize that there is no money in the world that feels as good as making a change to another human life. And I think that it becomes an addictive thing. It's, it's so, so powerful. So these days, I kind of consider myself an es escapologist, if I can pronounce that, an escapologist like Harry Houdini, um, because hypnosis was my ability to escape my prison. And now I feel like I'm an escapologist for other people. And their prisons are going to be different from my prison. For them, it might be the prison of addiction or the prison of anxiety or the prison of an overweight body that they feel that they can't escape from. So I play the role of detective. I figure out what prison they're in and I try and show them that they already have the key if they can just find it. It's not about me changing them. It's about help me helping them to escape their own prison. Because when you do escape your own prison, you realize that everything is a mirage and you can create your own reality. And the world is a really exciting place once you know how to get there. So thank you very, very much for the time. Thank you for the invite, Vicky. And I encourage whatever prison you are still trapped in, if you are, you have the key to escape your own prison. Thank you so much. Thank you, Adam. And what we might do for everybody here in the Zoom room, not you guys watching the replay of the live, we might even get Adam to do some stand-ups comedian because we all play after these live episodes in the Zoom, Zoom room and get together. So thank you so much for sharing. And again, if we start asking ourselves, what prison are we, we in? And when we bring together everybody, the stories of everybody that shared from the heart without any planning of, of the whole episode all around living your dreams, facing the fear, getting out of your prison, living in the present, having the people that are there to support you, you know, do daydream, get out there, you know, be in the right place at the right time, synchronicity. It is all truly, truly magical. And we can say synchronicity, or as our good friend Sanjeev and Deepak Chopra say, it's called synchro destiny, because it's destiny that we're all in the same room. It's destiny that you're watching the live. It's destiny that perhaps you're watching the replay or you've just jumped on at a certain time. It's destiny that people are actually in this Zoom room and we're going to have a little bit of fun after. So I want to say from the bottom of my heart and the bottom of Hit Talks team's heart, thank you very much to all of our family of speakers here today. And I'm sure you watching the live and the replay can really, really take some messages, some nuggets of hope inspiration and transformation and please come and join us again you know our details are down below please come and join us the next episode is on the 30th of april and the reason we've got this episode on the 13th of april as we as as you know and if you don't know i'm going to tell you now but the energies of the two chosen dates is all around the mayan energies and on the 30th of april we're starting a new journey it's all about the new discovery it's literally the new concept again it's a number Number one, it's part of a new cycle. So we're bringing together eight amazing speakers again to be able to share with you hope, inspiration and transformation. So please join us. Please watch the replay. Please reach out if there's any way that we can serve you if you'd like to be a speaker or host your own special edition. My name is Vicky Thomas and thank you so much from Hit Talks and the Hit Talks team. I love you all so very, very much. <laughs>